Hey, what's up guys? Do you have slow Wi-Fi speeds at home or not enough Wi-Fi coverage? If so, you're watching the right video. Stay tuned to the end. I'm going to go over some of the different concepts and different devices you can actually use. So from routers to mesh Wi-Fi's to what a Moco adapter does to what a switch does and just basically explain it in a way where you can actually by getting some of this stuff you can actually noticeably improve your Wi-Fi speeds and your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. So this is a typical setup we have a cable modem right here you might have an ONT you might have a DSL or something else that provides you internet access and this is a typical router so if you have a router if you're not in a huge home or there's not too many walls one router might be enough for you but if you're and if it's centrally placed, if you're, if you're in a home where this is kind of on one side of your house and by the time you got to the other side of your house, your Wi-Fi you know, speeds are really, really suffering, this is when you should consider getting a mesh Wi-Fi system. Now, if you have a router, you can also just get an extender, but from my experience, extenders don't work quite as well as mesh Wi-Fi systems. So, what is a mesh Wi-Fi? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi, I'm going to move the router out of the way. And I'm going to bring you an example mesh Wi-Fi. Actually, this is, we'll, we'll start with this one. I have a few other mesh Wi-Fi's here and I'm going to explain some other things. So this is a standard mesh Wi-Fi system. Now, what a mesh Wi-Fi does is technically each one of these are routers. However, in the same network, only the main one acts as the router. So how do you know that what the main one is? Well, that's the one that's actually hooked up to your modem. So the one that's hooked up to your modem automatically becomes the main one. And the way you do that is you hook up the ethernet cable to the WAN port. If, if, if it doesn't have auto sensing ports, then you wanna put it in the WAN port like so. Now when you do this, ASUS, this is the ASUS XT5, which, and anything I talk about, I've actually reviewed all of, uh, all of this stuff, so if you're interested in speed test, range test, I'll put links down below for those videos where I actually review the actual product. Now, in this case, this just became the router. Now, this is also technically a router. However, in the same network, it acts as a node. So instead of having one guy, like this standard router, you know, giving out all the speeds and the Wi-Fi antennas, you know, spreading out the signal, now you actually have two. And you can also have, you know, you could get a three pack, a, a four pack. I, I think most mesh systems don't recommend having more than five but typically two or three is the most common that I see. Okay, so these two work together to create more Wi-Fi coverage. So this is next to your modem, which might be on one side of your house, and then this one is one or two rooms away, and it's hooked up to power, and it's wirelessly talking to this one. Now this creates a wireless backhaul network. So these now have just boosted your Wi-Fi coverage. And when you take your Wi-Fi device like your phone and you're near this room, it automatically detects that and connects to this one. And then when you're walking throughout your house, it basically sees this one, it sees it's closer to this one, it automatically switches you here. You do not need to do anything for this to occur because all of this is done automatically. In this case, this is a wireless backhaul setup. You can also do a wired backhaul setup. Now, what is the difference between wired and wireless backhaul? Well, the differences are that wired backhaul typically gives you better results. So what you would do is you would connect this ethernet cord to the LAN port of the uh, router that's acting as the router, and this would, would come and go inside the WAN LAN port of the secondary one. Now, if you did this, you basically just create a wired network between these two, and this ensures that they both have full speeds throughout your home. Assuming, I mean, this mesh system is limited to gigabit speed, so assuming your internet speeds are gigabit and under, you now have full speeds throughout your home. However, that's not always possible. You might not want to run an ethernet cable, you know, throughout your home or inside the walls. So what do you do then? Because wired backhaul is typically better especially in the case of mesh systems that are more on the budget side, they typically happen to be dual band systems. And dual band just means there's two frequencies, a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz. And dual band systems like the ASUS XT5 don't have good enough wireless backhaul speed. So let's say if you're paying for internet speeds of 500 megabits per second, this main one would give you those speeds, but the secondary one, you'd probably be, I mean, depending on where this was placed, you'd probably be getting around 250 or something like that, maybe 300 megabits per second down when you get closer to this one. So 
there's another option for that. Well, what you could do is you could get something called a Mocha adapter. Now, different brands sell this. This is one by Asus, uh, which is the Asus MA25. And this one can actually support up to 2.5 gigabit speeds throughout your home through the coax cable. So, how does this work? Well, I have these two connected with the coax to each other, but this would basically be, this would connect inside one room to the coax in the wall, and then this one would connect to another room in the coax in the wall. And assuming those two coax cables were touching each other, connected to each other in some form or fashion, then these two would communicate. And now what, it, what would happen is the internet signal or the local network signal would basically travel through this coax within your walls and get to the secondary one. Now the way you would hook this up, and again, I've done videos on even this one as well, the ASUS ME25, but what you would do for that one is you'd have an ethernet cable going from your main router to, and it doesn't matter which one of these you select, you would basically hook it up to one of these. This would connect to the coax in your wall. Again, this is for demonstration purposes that I just have one coax right here. And then from the other wall, let's say two or three rooms away, this one is hooked up to the coax in the wall and then out comes the ethernet. And these do require their own power supplies. But once you would do that, you can actually now connect this to the WAN LAN. There it is. So you would connect this here and now you just created a wired network without running wires through your home because you're running it on the existing coax cables that are in your home. Now, if your coax cables in your home are not really great quality or there's too many splitters, the speeds might decrease. Um, but generally speaking, I did a test on these and I got like 2.2 gigabits per second download and upload. And I mean, it can go up to that high basically. I've, I've actually seen it go all the way up to like 2.3 or so. So even in that case, I think these should still do okay. But this basically creates a wired backhaul network in your home without you running extra wires. So you don't need to run a new ethernet cable from this guy to this guy, you know, through your attic or your ceiling, which is not always even possible. So you can use a Mocha adapter. So that's one of the advantages of this. Now, if you don't want to get something like this and you want to run wireless backhaul, what you could do is you can either get a system like this, XD5, or you could get a tri-band system, which not every tri-band is going to be fast, but in the case of, let me unplug this stuff. In the, in the case of this one, which I just so happened to test, this is the Asus X-T9, uh, and this one does cost more than the X-T5. However, the wireless backhaul performance out of this thing is amazing. So this would be connected in the same way. So you would basically hook this up. These are both routers, again, just like that one. This is a different mesh Wi-Fi system, but it's the same exact concept. This is the router and this is now acting as the node. And this is just hooked up to your modem. Now, the wireless backhaul speeds on this are very, very good. So if you get a system like this or something even uh, more expensive, then typically you're going to get better wireless backhaul speeds. And again, when you're walking throughout your home, this is, you know, one or two rooms away, it will automatically switch you here or here, depending on where you are. So just the mesh system alone will boost your speeds throughout your home and, and should increase your Wi-Fi speeds as well when you're farther away, because now there's another node there. And if you are wondering, okay, if this guy's wirelessly talking to this one, can I use the ethernet ports from this one to connect my computer to or my TV or Xbox or whatever? And the answer is yes. So even though these are wirelessly talking to each other, you could use the ethernet ports on the secondary one. And finally, I get some other questions like, how can I increase my ethernet ports if there's not enough ports on these? And the simple answer is you can get a switch. In this case, this is an unmanaged switch and the name brand does not matter. So it, it doesn't matter if this is an ASUS or if it's a TP-Link mesh system like this Deco right here. It does not matter. Uh, the unmanaged switch does not matter. So between the mesh system, they do matter. But within the unmanaged switch, you can get 
you know, a different name brand like Netgear. And the same is true for the Mocha adapter as well. This just so happens to be an Asus Mocha adapter. However, it doesn't have to be an Asus. It could be some other brand and it will work with Asus and other brands. And so what you would do is you could basically just hook up, you know, any one of these ports. It doesn't, it doesn't matter actually. And then hook it up to any one of these ports on the switch, which also doesn't matter. So, and then boom. So you connect it to this. Now you have seven other usable ports. So, and, and you can even, if you wanted to, again, it doesn't matter. But if you wanted to, you can even go from this unmanaged switch to this other uh, mesh Wi-Fi to create a wired backhaul network if, if you wanted to do that. And so you would have, again, full uh, Wi-Fi speeds. Granted, this is already really good as it is, the, specifically the X-T9. Yeah, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment sections below. But uh, basically, Mesh Wi-Fi's are pretty awesome and, and they're typically better than routers plus extenders because they're designed together. So, and then when you get updates, they, they both get updated at the same time. It's handled within the same app. So it's just Mesh Wi-Fi's are just a lot better from my experience than getting a router and an extender. So there we go. Thank you guys for watching. I'll, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave me in the comment sections below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.